We're going to be doing a moment of inertia lab, and our purpose is to determine the moment of inertia, also called the angular inertia or rotational inertia, of this device right here. Now, I call this the rotational apparatus. So uh, we're trying to figure out the moment of inertia of this thing. Um, but the moment of inertia will differ depending on what axis of rotation. Where is the axis of rotation for this setup? Where is that? I need you to figure that out right now. Where is that axis of rotation? Axle and axis have the same root word. So it's this axle right here. That's the axis of rotation. It goes right through the middle of this thing. Uh, it's a straight line right through the middle of that that goes on for infinity is the axis. Now the next question is this. I don't know the mass of this thing, but if I did, could I just use mr squared to calculate the moment of inertia? For example, use the radius of one of these bars here and just calculate mr squared. Would that give me the moment of inertia? Well, the answer is no. This is not a single point mass at the end of a massless string or a hoop of radius r. Uh, it's a continuous object. And all the little teeny pieces of mass are different distances from that axis. So you cannot use mr squared. Uh, if you could model it mathematically, you might be able to use calculus. But you cannot just find the mass and pick a radius out of all the different infinite numbers of radii and multiply mr squared. It doesn't work for this. We're going to have to find it experimentally. And the first thing I typically do when we do this lab live is I have students grab this right here and try to accelerate it rotationally like that from there and then try to do it from out here. And I need you to do this with a broom so you can see what I'm talking about. It's crucial that you actually do this, otherwise you will not understand what I'm talking about. So take your broom or long-handled object, grab it at one end, and don't let that end move. That'll be your axis of rotation. Then grab it close to the axis of rotation and try to accelerate it angularly. So that doesn't mean get it going at constant speed. That doesn't show it to you. You want to change the angular velocity as rapidly as you can to experience this and try to keep the axis of rotation uh, in one spot. Then grab it farther from the axis of rotation and try to do that again. So again, what we're doing is we're grabbing it close to the axis of rotation trying to angularly accelerate it, and then grab it far from the axis of rotation and try to angularly accelerate it again. The question is, which one is easier and why? Why is it easier to accelerate it rotationally out here compared to trying to accelerate it rotationally right here? Why is it easier from out here? Well, torque is R cross F. So the bigger the R is, the more torque we get. That's why we get more torque. It's easier with the same amount of force if we grab it way out here as compared to grabbing it right here. The farther out you get, the more torque you get with the same amount of force. So the next thing we got to do is see how this thing is going to accelerate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this string and I'm going to wrap it around this middle pulley right here. And I'll wrap it around very carefully, trying not to overlap the string on itself. Here is how this is going to accelerate. We have our hanging mass right here. You can see how it's wrapped around there. And I'm just going to allow this thing to drop, and it will accelerate rotationally. This is a really low acceleration right there. And it will fall all the way down. We're going to have it fall one meter. For every trial, the distance falling will be one meter. Here's one question. What is R for the torque that is being applied to the rotational apparatus? That is what we want to answer right now. What is R for the torque that is being applied to the rotational apparatus? So here's our first choice. A, is that the R for the torque applied to the rotational apparatus? Is that R for torque on this thing? 
Here's choice B. That one goes from the axis of rotation to the center of the hanging mass. Is that R for the torque on the rotational apparatus? Here's choice C. Is that the R for the torque on the rotational apparatus? And here is choice D. Is that the R for the torque on the rotational apparatus? And here they are all together, so you can look at them all at once, which represents the R for the torque applied to the rotational apparatus by the string. So remember your rhymes, R is the displacement from the axis of rotation to the point of force application. There's a hint for you. Where is the force being applied to this rotational apparatus? It is simply the radius of this pulley right here, this middle pulley. So I have to measure from this axis of rotation out to where this string is contacting it right there. So what I did was I just measured the diameter of this pulley between there and there with a vernier caliper, just that distance right there, and then I cut it in half and I've given you that value. So that is R for the torque. And what is providing the torque on this rotational apparatus? What force? Give you a hint, here we go. There's a torque being applied to it right now. That's why it's accelerating rotationally. What is applying the torque to the rotational apparatus? A lot of people think it's the force of gravity that acts on the rotational apparatus. But here's what happens when the force of gravity acts on it. Nothing! It's tension. It's the tension of this string acting at that point right there to get the torque. Here's the next question. Uh, when we calculate torques, we always use R cross F. R cross F, which means RF sine theta. What is the theta for this situation? Well, I can give you some more information. Uh, this whole thing spins about five times around as, this, as, the, as the mass is falling. The whole thing spins five times around. Each time around, obviously, is 360 degrees. So that might be theta. I'm going to start it off at least for one of the trials, approximately right there with that bar like that. And why don't we just say that's at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. That might be theta. And notice how this string comes off of there. This string hangs directly down. What is theta for the torque applied to the rotational apparatus in this situation? Torque is defined as R cross F, or RF sine theta, where theta is the angle between R and F. In this case, F is the tension caused by the string. So for pulleys pulled by strings, the angle theta is always 90 degrees because strings always come off tangentially from pulleys. It's important to understand that when measuring the angle between two vectors, you really need to put the vectors tail to tail. Sine of theta, however, is so forgiving, it will let you use the head to tail angle, and you'll get the same value as the sine of the tail to tail angle. However, that does not work for dot products or cosine. If you absolutely need the angle between two vectors, you must put them tail to tail. And another important question, when I wrap this string around this pulley, I am very careful not to let the string overlap itself. You can see that each each time I wound around, I wound it around separately so it didn't wrap over itself. The string doesn't pile on top of itself anywhere on this. Why do I want the string to not wrap over itself? Well, because I want a constant torque throughout this experiment. I don't want R to change. Torque is R cross F. If the string piles on itself, R will get bigger and the torque will change. So for this lab, all we're going to do is we're going to allow the mass to drop one meter. And we're going to determine the acceleration of the mass. We're going to determine the tension in the string. And then we're going to determine the torque applied to this rotational apparatus. And using that, we're going to attempt to find the moment of inertia of this rotational apparatus.
Now this final question is probably the one that kids get wrong the most. We've got this mass m at the end of this string. Let me ask you about the tension. As the mass m accelerates downward, is the tension greater than mg, equal to mg, or less than mg? Well, notice that the mass is accelerating down, so the force of gravity must be greater than the tension or it would not accelerate down. If the tension were equal to mg, it would either remain at rest or move at a constant velocity.